My full name is Myron Orfield. I'm an associate professor of law and the director of the Institute on Race and Poverty at the University of Minnesota Law School. Well, we found two things. One, that uh, blacks and Latinos and Asians at all levels of income are much more likely to be denied uh, loans than whites of similar income. And in fact, high income minority uh, families and home, uh, home purchases are, are, are much more likely to be denied uh, prime lending than low income whites. So there's a, quite a striking uh, inequity there. Perhaps because of this, uh, black, uh, black, Latino, and Asian people at all levels of income are much more likely to have subprime loans than whites at almost any level of income. The second biggest finding we have found is that racially segregated neighborhoods, which are largely in the core cities, and racially integrated neighborhoods that include parts of the core cities and first ring suburbs, are much less likely to be receiving their fair share of prime credit. And that uh, when you have black and Latino and Asian families living together in segregated or integrated neighborhoods, uh, these neighborhoods are also discriminated against just like the individuals. So it's a double whammy when you put together individual discrimination and neighborhood discrimination. It creates a double whammy in certain parts of the metropolitan area. Now there's nothing in this report that says that uh, uh, neighborhoods, uh, some people uh, are more credit uh, risky than others. But it says that when you have these kinds of disparities, when it's harder for high-income blacks uh, to get a prime loan than low-income whites across the board. Uh, and uh, and uh, neighborhoods look like they uh, are vastly underrepresented in prime credit. This, is, uh, this, uh, this suggests that there's a serious problem in government enforcement of these rules and in the private market's uh, response to these neighborhoods and these individuals. It's having a devastating effect. If you look at our maps, you'll see uh, we have a, a dot for every foreclosure. You know, and if you look at North Minneapolis and the first string of suburbs to the north, they have been devastated by the subprime crisis and foreclosures. Also, neighborhoods, the segregated and integrated neighborhoods of the south side of Minneapolis and the first string suburbs. The segregated neighborhoods of St. Paul and the integrated neighborhoods have been devastated by this. If you look at white neighborhoods that are adjacent, they haven't had too strong of an impact. There are scatterings of foreclosures. There's some, some private loans. That are, you know, every part of the region is affected. But the segregated and integrated neighborhoods of the regions that are neighborhoods that are segregated by race and non-white, or neighborhoods that are white and uh, minority integrated, are the ones that have really been hit hard in the core of the region. The federal government in 1968 said, be careful and make sure that you're being fair to these neighborhoods. Make sure that you provide fair and adequate credit to these neighborhoods. Uh, the federal government, the state government agencies have never really uh, uh, tried to make sure that these guarantees happen. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit like the subprime lending crisis. Uh, there were uh, laws that uh, may have been weak, but they, they perhaps never were very strongly enforced by any of the agencies that were monitoring them. And when there aren't actions brought uh, to try to keep uh, things happening, sometimes people don't pay very close attention to them. Well, the recommendation says take seriously the guarantees of the 1968 Fair Housing Act, that if the law had been enforced vigorously, this crisis would have been less severe, particularly in the segregated and integrated neighborhoods of the region. So take seriously those laws. Uh, try to make sure that those laws apply to all uh, uh, people in the chain, uh, the, all the banks and, and lending institutions and securities organizations that are there. Uh, make sure that the government does its job to enforce the Fair Housing Act by monitoring the housing market using uh, testing studies that periodically test the housing market and responding to those testing studies to make sure that markets are fair. Uh, the, the Community uh, Reinvestment Act, uh, those those efforts were strong, and the, and the loans that were underwritten and supported by the Community Reinvestment Acts were stronger, and it suggests that uh, to broaden the Community Reinvestment Act. It also says that there should probably be a fair housing center of some kind in the metropolitan area uh, to make sure that the government and the private sector do their job and, and provide adequate and uh, secure credit for these neighborhoods as they deserve uh, the credit. 